So let's talk about what the Zebra has to offer. Now this e-bike has a 750 watt geared hub motor that powers this bike. Now since she's a class two, there's a throttle control so you can have pedal assist, meaning that as you pedal, the motor will apply additional force to make riding easier. Or you can just sit in the saddle, apply the throttle, and the bike will propel itself on its own. Under ideal conditions with the operator pedaling along, you could have a range of up to 80 miles. Or if you just choose to sit in the saddle and apply the throttle, you can reach top speeds up to 25 miles an hour. Now the heart of any e-bike is the battery, and I'm very happy that Hemway chose to go with a name brand manufacturer to provide their batteries for their e-bikes. And coupled with the Zebra, you'll find either an LG battery or a Samsung. And these are 48 volt, 20 amp hour batteries. And being that they're made by a quality manufacturer, I know that they'll be safe. As far as the bike itself, it's very robust. Now this can be a good thing and a bad thing. Weighing in at 79 pounds, the bike certainly isn't light, but all that mass helps for a very smooth ride when you're out on the road. Now the frame is made out of 6061 aluminum and will support riders up to 400 pounds. As you might expect from an e-bike, the Zebra comes with a multifunction LCD display and that will show you your pedal assist level, the odometer, speedometer, a watt meter, your battery capacity, and it's USB rechargeable. Hi, I'm Scott from Six Points Woodworks and we're building this 41 foot trawler yacht in the backyard of our upstate New York home. Now she was designed with the home builder in mind and once complete she'll be able to cross oceans and take two people comfortably anywhere in the world that they want to go. This is the Sea Dreamer Project. <music> The goal for this episode was to get started on the aft decking, but before I could do that, I needed to cut the transom to shape. Now because I know my framing isn't all perfectly symmetrical on both sides of the boat, I tried a couple different methods to make sure that the decking would lay smoothly and look fair. Those methods included getting the 3 8 inch thick beadboard plywood up onto the top of the boat and actually laying it in place so that I could see how the curve laid. I also used a batten, a laser level, because a tape measure never lies.
Once I was satisfied with the curve on the transom, it was time for the cut. Now the problem here is that my circular saw will only cut to a depth of about two and three quarters of an inch and the transom is well over three inches thick. Plus I had to add bevel to the circular saw cut so that it laid fair on the rest of the decking. So I began with a plunge cut with the circular saw, cutting through all the fasteners and nails that were already in place to secure parts of the planking and then finished off the cut with the reciprocating saw. Now if you remember from a previous episode, I cut one sheet of the aft decking to notch out for the aft companionway. Now I wish I wouldn't have done that because I found that if I would have started in the middle with the decking, I would have ended up with thin strips of decking on both sides of the boat, and I wanted to avoid that. However, all was not lost because those sheets that were laid into place along the center line for that aft decking worked as a nice straight edge to allow me to build my patterns for the curving sections of the decking as it moves aft.
Now it's always good practice to stagger the joints on tongue and groove material, so I was able to salvage the piece that I notched out for that aft companion way as a staggered joint for the curving sections that I temporarily installed along the port side. All right, I like how things are coming together. Now that last sheet of beadboard that I put down is a little bit warped, so once the fasteners get in it, it'll lay smooth. But otherwise, the fairing has been really nice on the deck beams and things are laying smooth and fair, and I like how it's coming together. Now I think I need about three more sheets of the beadboard in order to complete the aft decking here, but I need to start thinking about a few things as well. And one is that the last sheet is going to narrow down to a very narrow strip, and I need to figure out how that's going to lay when it might not necessarily fall exactly on a deck beam or might not line up with uh, the tongue and groove system, and can I make my own groove or tongue if I need to so this beadboard comes together and looks good from the inside. I also need to think about my glue up plane because of course all this decking will be epoxied in place and this is a big glue up job for epoxy because things need to be all done at the same time because you can't glue down a sheet of tongue and groove material because once that edge is set where it's going to be you won't be able to lift it a little bit to slide your tongue into the groove so this really needs to be done all at once so I'm probably going to need to bring in an extra pair of hands or two and then have a really comprehensive glue up plan so things go smoothly and we're able to set all these sheets all at once and everything has to fit 
just like it's fitting right now, which as you know, humidity and temperature changes can affect how wood expands and contracts. So that could be a little bit tricky, but so we do have some things to think about in that respect. Now, I know I've been gone for a few months and I've gotten some emails from people. Are you okay? Has the project stopped? Is the family okay? And everything's fine. So what happened is that I took a job at a local golf course in order to earn some extra money for the project. And I was gonna be just doing two days a week, no big deal. But then one of the other guys that I work with in the shop became ill with a fairly serious illness and was out for quite a while. So I was needed to pick up some extra shifts, which I of course was happy to do. And the other reason that I took the job is because anybody who's worked in law enforcement or the fire service or you know healthcare, even any public service job, so you've had that dream to once you're done, once you're retired, you're going to move away to a cabin in Montana and never deal with another human being again because you become so jaded to the human condition and seeing how people treat each other or the things they do to themselves. And, you know, it takes something out of you and you think you just want to be all by yourself. And that's true for a time after you first retire, but then you start to notice that you do miss humanity. You do miss being part of a team. And I found that happening to myself. So, you know, taking the job was a great way to earn some extra income, but it was also important for like my mental health to be back involved with humans and dealing with humans uh, who are nice. You know, nobody's trying to hurt me, nobody's uh, trying to kill me or uh, yell at me. It's been a very good experience and I'm happy to have the opportunity. And unfortunately, it takes away time from the project and you know, so be it, that's fine. YouTube is just not profitable. I'm not gonna do Patreon. I don't ask people for money. Um, it's just the way that I am. This is my project and you know, I'm glad to have people following along, but it's not you know, your job to help me pay for my boat. There are much uh, more worthy other channels that I'm sure you all watch that deserve your support and financial support. You know, young people trying to live out that dream. Um, I think that's great. You know, throw your support behind them. I'm just gonna work at my own pace and do my own thing here. And if it takes a little bit longer or a lot longer, then that's just the way it'll be. And I'm not gonna put, I'm not gonna make this an unfun process by trying to, you know, push out content um, on some kind of schedule. It just, it is what it is. If you're gonna follow along, I'm happy to have you follow along. Love hearing from you. And, you know, we'll keep plugging away. It's just the content might not be as regular or it might not be as, uh, as focused as some other channels. And that's okay because we're, I wanna keep it fun. I wanna keep building this project as fun. I wanna continue creating content that is fun for me. And so that's what I'm gonna to continue to do. So your job is what it always is. Like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you next time. Thank you.